Pina here, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional cannelloni dish. And this, this particular cannelloni is going to be made in the air fryer, um, the air fryer oven. So you can, you, you can do this dish in your oven, you can do this dish in the air fryer, it doesn't matter. But I, today I'm doing it in my air fryer. And with this dish, normally you use um, minced meat, minced beef um, is the normal thing to use. Or you can use minced pork, minced lamb. Uh, but I'm using min minced turkey, lean minced turkey today to give it that extra um, twist. So, but this dish with turkey mince is absolutely delicious. You should try it. If you've done it with, with uh, beef before, do try it with turkey mince because it just is amazingly flavor flavoursome as well. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to make that traditional dish, but with turkey mince. So let's get started, shall we? So for this recipe... You're going to need, for the, um, the main ingredients for the dish, you're going to need two eggs, one or two eggs, depending, and I'll show you as we go along how many, um, three sort of medium chopped onions, and uh, a tub of ricotta cheese. You're going to need some parmesan cheese. You're also going to need four to five cloves of garlic. You're going to need some minced meat. Um, you can use turkey, lamb, mince or pork, like I said before. Um, I'm using turkey today, lean turkey mince. So that's what I'm using today. So, and that's about 500 grams, I think, of mince in that packet. You're going to need some, um, of course, your cannelloni, a box of cannelloni, Depending how many you're making it for, but I'm going to use a box because I'm just making it for um, this size dish. I'll show you the size dish I'm going to be using. So my dish is pretty much that size. So you'll need a dish as well, a squarish dish preferably. Uh, you're going to need some tomato puree, some passata, and that's for the sauce. So you're going to need passata. You're going to need some olive oil, okay, uh, you're going to need some salt and pepper, salt and pepper, okay, you're going to need some oregano and Italian herbs or one or the other, it doesn't matter, but I like mixing both, um, you're going to need some red wine, that's for the sauce, and that's what you're going to need for the main part of the dish. Now um, also you're going to need some basil, a few leaves of fresh basil that's going into the sauce um, for the cannelloni. Now you're also going to need, I'm just going to pop them aside, pop them aside. So you're also going to need a, uh, to make the bechamel sauce, you don't have to have bechamel sauce on in this dish but it's nice to have a bit of a drizzle of bechamel. So for that, you're going to need about a cup of milk, about a cup of flour, or just half a cup of flour, not too much, um, some cheddar cheese, or any cheese, um, and you're going to need a knob of butter and some bay leaves. Now I've got four or five bay leaves here doesn't matter, you can have two or three, but I'm having about four or five, and a knob, and a knob, knob of butter. So that's what you're going to need for the bechamel sauce. So that's, that's entirely up to you if you want the bechamel sauce. You don't have to. You can always leave it out, because some people do. Um, sometimes I do the bechamel, sometimes not, it depends. So that's your main ingredients, um, and that's what we're going to be using and there's your parmesan cheese, mustn't forget that, that's important. So that's your ingredients that you'll be using for this dish, okay, the main ingredients. Um, now I'm going to start by doing the red sauce that goes on top of the dish, and that's the Italian rich red sauce. While that's cooking, we can then start making the filling for the cannellonis. So um, of course the sauce takes a bit longer to cook so we'll start with the sauce so let's go over to the hob okay so now we're at the hob I'm just going to put my hob on high heat and I'm going to put my olive oil in to start with so let's just put enough olive oil to sort of coat the bottom of this pan 
so that we can just start with making the uh, Italian sauce. So I've got my olive oil in there and I'm just going to let that heat up and then begin to fry our onions. Okay, once your oil is heated up, uh, we're going to put the onions in, but we're going to leave a little bit of the onions behind for the filling. So just put about three quarters of the onions into the pan and just leave a little bit behind for the filling. So that's all you need to do. It's like, like about half an onion behind. So I'm just going to leave that on the side. And now that my onions are in, just let them cook. And I'm going to also going to put my um, garlic in. But again, I'm only going to put three quarters of the garlic in because I'm leaving some of that for my filling. So make sure you put about three quarters of the garlic in and leave a little bit just for the filling. You only need a little bit for the filling. So I'll just pop the other, the other bit aside. Okay, stir your onions until golden brown. So make sure all your onions and garlic are well cooked in there. Now you want your onions to be thoroughly cooked and golden brown. So keep turning, okay, you know, regularly, keep turning your onions, making sure they are really fully cooked before you add any other ingredients. Okay, once your onions are thoroughly cooked, golden brown, we're going to put the um, uh, passata in. So you've got your bottle of passata, just pour, pour it in while the onions are still cooking like so and then I'm just gonna add a bit of water just to get it there you go now I'm gonna stir that together like that so we've got a nice rich red sauce there now we're going to now put our salt and pepper and some of the other ingredients so I'm just gonna put a bit of salt about a tablespoon of salt about a teaspoonful of, of black pepper um, you're going to put some some Italian herbs, so just as, as much as you want. I'm just going to put about about a tablespoon of Italian herbs. I'm going to add some oregano, about half a tablespoon of oregano. I'm going to give that a little stir in. It's the flavours, um, the smell is, is is wonderful. Herbs bring out the smell. Look at that, it's beautiful. So that's your rich red Italian sauce. Now what we're going to put in now, we're going to put our uh, basil leaves in, as many as you want, the more the better. And I might just put a few more in at the end, just to give it that lovely basil sauce uh, fragrance. Put a couple more in there. There's no harm putting loads of basil in, as much as you want. So we're gonna put that in. Now I'm going to add a little bit of wine, and that's about about half a cup of wine at the moment, at the beginning, and I'm going to add some more um, towards the end or the middle of the cooking. So just stir that all in like so. Now we're going to put uh, about a tablespoon of um, tomato puree. Okay, so that's tomato puree. So about a tablespoon of tomato puree. So let's plonk that in, give that a stir. And that gives it the richness, that tomato puree. It gives it more of a rich sauce. So that's pretty much all your ingredients in the sauce. Now, all you need to do is let that sauce, leave it aside and let that cook. And it may take quite quite a while, about, about an hour, I would say, or 45 minutes, um, 45 minutes to an hour to get that nice, rich red sauce. Now, I'm going to put the lid on. So cover that, cover it and put it on a sort of medium heat to low, it depends on your cooker, but medium to low heat and until that's that's fully cooked, okay? Um, and if you find it's bubbling up too much, just put it on, on a very low heat. Now, while your sauce is cooking, you're going to make your filling, your mincemeat filling. Now, for that, you're going to need, um, you're going to need your, uh, some, some olive oil in your pan, about a couple of, two, three tablespoons of olive oil in your pan 
and then you're going to heat that up that's, so that's hot enough and then we're going to fry off some onions so make sure that's heated up first once you've um, your, your oil is hot enough put the remainder of the onions that you put aside earlier on put that remainder into the pan and the remainder of the garlic into the pan I'm just going to put that in as well from my garlic crusher fine and I'm just going to give that a stir so those onions and garlics are cooking away nicely okay make sure you continue stirring these onions you don't want them burnt just keep them nice and brown them off nicely I'm just going to reduce my heat a little bit okay now that your onions are almost cooked browned off I'm going to add my mincemeat in now so that's going to cook together so just add all your mincemeat in now your mincemeat mixed in with the onions. Give that a nice stir. So you want to cook the meat pretty much you want to cook it now properly. So give it a nice stir. Now at this stage you can put your salt, um, you put a bit of salt, about a teaspoonful of salt. I'm going to put some half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to put some Italian herbs in again and some oregano as much as you want or as little as you want so give that a mix in together and the smell is amazing wow it's lovely so uh, put your your medium flame on, medium heat on, and let that meat cook. We want to brown off all that meat in that pan, so just let it cook till it's brown. Also, not forgetting to stir your sauce. I've got my sauce in the back. Um, occasionally, keep stirring it so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Okay, now that your meat is browned off, as you can see, it's fully cooked. I'm just going to give that a little stir again. There you go, so your meat and onions are cooked together. We're going to remove that off, off the hob and I'm going to put that aside to cool down. We want to cool that down a little bit. So I'm going to put that aside now to cool down and I'm going to bring my sauce over and I'm going to show you how the sauce looks. Now, there you go, it's doing really well. It needs to cook a bit longer, but you've got the richness of the red tomato there. Um, now I'm going to put some more wine at this stage so I put another half a cup of wine just to give it that richness authentic Italian sauce flavour. So that's about a cup of wine, red wine in total throughout the whole cooking. So put your lid on back again and keep that cooking because that's still not ready it's got to be on um, for about like I said 45 minutes to an hour so I'm going to sort of keep that going and in the meantime I'm waiting for my mince to to cool down and we can then start filling the um, do the filling for the cannelloni okay now once your meat is pretty much cooled down you're going to remove it from the pan and put it into this mixing bowl so I'm just going to strain it from its juices so there's not too much juice coming with it and I'm just going to Put it into this pan. Now it might need cooling down a bit more because it looks a bit hot still. So make sure you cool it down completely so that you can mix it with your with your hands or whatever. Um, but afterwards, so you don't want it to be too hot. 
just going to get all the meat from the, I've left a bit of the juice behind. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I'm just going to grab a spoon, just give it a little mix like that. So cool it down and then we'll add the other ingredients. Once your meat's cooled, cooled down, you can then just add your ricotta. Your ricotta. I'm just going to add my ricotta cheese in there. Give that a little mix. And I'm going to add a bit of my parmesan in there, just to give it that extra kick. Um, so just grab my parmesan. You can as, add as much parmesan as you like. I'm just going to add a couple of tablespoons. There we go. Mix that in to the, the meat mixture, like so. That looks nice, nice and creamy. And now you're going to add, um, I think one egg would be enough. You can always judge by how runny your mixture is. You don't want it to be too runny. So I'm gonna, I've just cracked an egg in that mixture. And that helps bind it when you put it into your cannelloni tubes. Now I think I'm going to put a bit more Parmesan cheese just to, just to thicken it up a bit. There we go. There we go. That's nice. That gives it that lovely cheesy flavour. There you go. So that's all mixed up nicely, as you can see. It's all lovely and creamy and meaty. Now that's going to go into our cannelloni tubes. So I'm going to grab my tubes now. Okay, for the tubes, we're going to just, um, you can do this by hand, you can do it with a spoon, grab a teaspoon and do it with a teaspoon if you want. So I'm going to show you both ways. Another th thing you could use is a piping bag, but um, I haven't got one of those. So I'm just going to use a teaspoon and show you. You can either use a teaspoon, which is a little bit difficult, like so, or you can use your hands, which is a lot easier to stuff them. You see? So you just stuff your uh, cannelloni tubes, like with your fingers, into the tube and just push it down as you go along, push it down and that's it. You can just make sure they are fully stuffed. There we go, and then just pop it aside in a plate. I've got a plate here, just here. I'm just gonna pop it aside on a plate. So I'm just gonna keep filling my tubes up like so. Okay, so just keep full, just continue filling up your tubes. It's quite easy, you just fill in and then you can just fill in the other end if you want. Do it both way, both ends, or one end, and then push it down, and you know, make sure it's fully stuffed, like so. Pop that aside. Got them on this dish here. Fill in as many as you need for your um, tray that will fit in your tray. So I'm just going to stuff them completely. Push it all the way down to the other end, like so. So both ends are nicely stuffed. Like that. Okay, so continue stuffing all your tubes like this. It's much easier with your hands than it is with um, with a spoon. So I would recommend by your hands or a piping bag would be easy too. So I'm just going to continue the last of these tubes. So go ahead and do all your tubes, as many as you, you've got for your tray. And then I'll come back to you to show you um, how to do the rest. Now that you've stuffed all your cannellonis, um, we're going to do we're going to put these in the fridge now to set so that they sort of 
get harder inside and set properly. The meat will just get firm with the ricotta cheese. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge for now for a few minutes, probably about five, 10 minutes by the time I've finished my um, bechamel sauce. So we're going over to the hob to do our bechamel sauce now. Okay, so I just wanna show you how the sauce is doing in the meantime before we start our bechamel. I'll give that a little stir. And as you can see, our sauce is doing really, really well. You can see it's almost cooked now and it's it smells wonderful see so i'm just going to keep that on the hob for a little bit longer and then we're going to we're just going to do our bechamel sauce so i'll put that on the back hob again grab another pan and i'm going to put my knob of butter in so i'm just going to get my knob of butter and put that into my pan so that it dissolves into the on the hob so let that dissolve let your butter dissolve okay so the butter's almost melted and from there we're going to put our um let's put that on low low heat I'm just going to put my flour in. So I'm just going to put two, three, four spoons of my flour. See how it is. Give that a, a stir. So it mixes in with the butter. So now I've got myself a spoon just to stir the butter into the flour. Once you've got the butter stirred into the flour, like so. We're going to add the milk. So I'm just going to add my milk in a minute. Just give that a little stir. And then gradually add your milk. And stir as you go along, like so. So just keep adding your milk and keep it on a high heat for now so that you can dissolve your butter and flour and milk and uh, milk together there you go so stirring frequently put some more milk in just going to lower that a little bit so this is how you make your bechamel so keep going until you've made a pasty sort of mixture like so. Stir vigorously. I'm going to put the rest of the milk I think, or just a bit more, and keep it stirring. Now don't worry about the lumps because they will come out as you're stirring it. Just keep stirring vigorously until you get everything mixed nicely together more milk right so I'm just going to lower my heat a little bit because it was too high and just keep going until you've dissolved all of it and mixed it all together and you don't worry about lumpiness if there is any lumps in it it doesn't matter because it's um, it'll be fine it's going into the cooking and it will start dissolving as it cooks so it's fine just keep going until you've the mixture is nice and smooth just vigorously do this I like to put a little bit of cheese in my bechamel so I'm going to put it on a low heat and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of I've got this cheddar cheese which gives it a little cheesy sauce flavour so I've just put that in as well put some cheddar cheese so that's melted inside and I'm going to put some bay leaves in too so I'm going to put two or three bay leaves in just to give it a bit of flavour and some nutmeg so I'm going to take that off the heat now and put some 
little bit of nut nutmeg, just about half a teaspoon of nutmeg inside there. And that's to give it that nice authentic flavour. So that's your bechamel sauce. And you can have it as runny as thick as you want it. I like it pretty much medium to thick, but some people like it runny. So that's my bechamel sauce done. I'm going to pop that on the side and let's get back to our sauce because that's pretty much ready as well. I'm just going to give that a stir and see how it's doing. Yep, that's fantastic. That's ready. Our sauce is ready. So let's go back over to the other side and show you how to layer up our cannelloni. So we've got our cannelloni dish ready and I'm just going to grab my sauce. Okay, so to start with, we are going to add some sauce to the bottom of the dish. So I'm just going to pop my sauce there. That's my dish. So I'm going to add some sauce at the bottom of the dish. So grab a spoon of your sauce and just pop it right at the bottom there, just to give it that base, like so. Okay, so once your sauce is there, then you're going to start layering your cannellonis. So I'm going to grab my cannelloni from the fridge. So here's my cannellonis, which I made earlier. So start putting them into your dish. Now you can layer them and depends how you're going to be able to fit them in. So I'm going to just layer them like this. So give them a little space because they're going to expand a little bit. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of space. Now that won't go that way, so I'm going to do it this way. might be able to fit one in no so what you can do is just literally just do it that way because obviously depending on the size of your dish so then you can start putting a bit of sauce sauce in between the layers because we're going to layer it up again so just put a bit of sauce on the top okay like so and then you start layering it up again so you can do it this way if you want it that way and I might be able to put three in there actually no that's too much so just don't squash them in together too much as I said just to keep them a nice distance there we go that's fine like that and then then you're going to put a bit more sauce on the top like so Now I'm going to cover it with a bit more sauce because you don't want it to burn and you want it to be covered. So there's more sauce there. Now, now at this stage you can sprinkle a bit of cheese, like so. And then I'm going to put my last two, which will probably have to be just there and just there. Okay, so I'm just going to put my sauce on that as well. My dish is square, so the cannellonis would just about fit like that. So again, so put your sauce. Now you want to cover it all up with the sauce. Make sure it's covered completely with the sauce. So I'm going to grab the rest of my sauce and just fill the pan up with the sauce. Okay, now that I've filled it up, I can now sprinkle my parmesan on the top, like so. And I'm going to put some bechamel now. So at this stage, we can put our bechamel. So here we are. Just going to put a little bit of a spoon of bechamel. Just run it across your cannelloni. Your cheesy bechamel sauce. put as much or as little as you want. I'm just going to put three three stripes across the top that so. So now that you've done that we're going to go over to the air fryer and we're going to put that into the air fryer. So I've had 
uh, the air fryer on, here it is, uh, heating for about 10 minutes as we were talking over there. And I'm, I've just turned it off to open it and show you what to do. So basically, we're going to turn it on and I'm just going to put some foil, I'll show you what I'm doing, loosely over the cannelloni, just a little bit of foil. And all you need to do is just get your foil and very loosely put it over the top of your cannelloni. You don't want it to stick to the bechamel. And this um, will be taken off at some point, but we're just going to keep it so it keeps everything retained inside the dish. So, okay, so that's your foil on your cannelloni. Now, I'm just going to open my air fryer oven and I'm going to pop that in like so. So that's in there, like so. I'm just going to make sure that stays down, doesn't come up. There we go. Now, close your air fryer. Okay, now that you've got your cannelloni in the oven, put your digital on and go up to 200 degrees and just press on. I'll just show you. So that's 200 degrees. Now we're going to do it for about 45 minutes. Um, with an air fryer, it's hard to tell sometimes, but I'd say leap 45 minutes, okay, with the foil on and checking occasionally, taking the cannelloni out the oven, checking to see that they're not drying out because you don't want um, them to dry. You want the moisture to be there with the, with the sauce. And if it does dry, just add a little bit of water to the dish. So basically 45 minutes, checking on it from time to time. And then we're gonna take the foil off near towards the end. We'll be taking the foil off and adding some more minutes to the dish. So keep an eye, 45 minutes. I'll see you back in about 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna check on the cannelloni now. Just gonna take that out of the oven and I'm going to see how cooked it is. It's been about, about 40 minutes, something like that, 40, 35, 40 minutes. And it's, let's have a look. I'm just gonna test it to see. It's pretty much cooked, but I would leave it another, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And then I would take the foil off. And then once I've taken the foil off, I let it cook for a bit longer. So I'm going to put that back in the oven. So make sure you do check it to see. Put your knife in to check how uh, the pasta is cooked. And if you feel like it's a bit al dente or too much al dente, then obviously leave it a bit longer. But if you feel like it's getting soggy, the pasta, and it's getting soft, it's almost cooked. So that needs another 10 minutes or so with the foil on. And then I'll be taking the foil off just to sort of finish off the rest of the time. So I'm just going to give it off another 10 minutes, so just I'll check it after 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm now going to take this out of the air fryer and check again on it. And I think it's almost ready, so I'm just going to grab the dish out of the air fryer. And have a look at it. I'll show you what it looks like right now. So I'm going to grab my knife and just check how cooked this is. Yes, they're pretty much cooked. So what's going to happen now, I'm going to put it back into the air fryer without the foil on for the next 10 minutes that's left on my clock. So let's pop that back in. So I've just popped that back in like so. And I'm going to close the oven and let it go for another 10 minutes. There's only 10 minutes left on the clock. So I'll leave that for the extra 10 minutes. Okay, so the time's finished and I'm just gonna, it's just turned off. So I'm just waiting to see how it looks. And I think that looks ready now. That looks perfectly ready. So I'm just gonna grab that out of the oven. Oops, right here. Just close that. Okay, so that's that's ready. That's perfectly ready. 
So let's take it over the other side and we're gonna give it a, I'm gonna take them out of the dish so you can have a look I'm at them. I'm going to take the cannelloni out of the dish so you can take a look. The best thing to do really is to wait until it's um, cooled down, but um, I'm gonna take it out of the dish now so you can see what they look like. So, so I'm just gonna grab, so you can have a look what they look like. Look at that, isn't that amazing? I'm just gonna get my plate, pop that in. Wow, look at that. Grab some of the sauce. All right, so I've dished it up and this is what it looks like. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Look at that Italian, look at that wonderful, those lovely colors. I'm just gonna get a fork so you can see inside. Okay, so let's try and cut a piece of this cannelloni so you can see the mince meat inside. You see the meat inside? I'll just grab a spoon so you can have a look. Look at that. And that's the filling just there. Just there is the filling, the meat filling. Wonderful, look at that. Smells amazing. Look at these cannellonis, look at them inside. You can see the, the filling inside that one there. And the sauce, the nice rich red sauce on top. And the ricotta and meat filling. So let's give this a go, shall we? Okay, so let's give this a, a taste and see what it tastes like, shall we? So I'm going to grab my spoon and I'm going to show you what it looks like first of all. Look at that. Cannelloni. Of course, I've already cut into it, so it's it'll look a bit odd at the moment, but it, it, it smells amazing. It really does. I'm just going to grab some of the mince filling and the pasta. Oh wow, that's really, really nice. I mean, the rich red sauce with the wine, it's amazing. It, it tastes beautiful, that sauce. And the key to the sauce is the wine. That's the key to the sauce. And of course, you've got the mince meat and the ricotta in the middle. You can, um, there'll be a, a video with me doing one on spinach and ricotta, but this is mince meat and ricotta absolutely delicious look at that I mean the sauce just makes it complete and the filling mmm oh it's it's just out of this world it really is it's delicious it's one of my favorite dishes cannelloni apart from lasagna wonderful You can taste all the flavours, oregano, garlic, loads of garlic, rich red sauce, basil, um, just everything's in there. It's all perfect, perfect amounts of the right um, spices and seasoning and lovely, wonderful dish. I hope you make this dish and um, please let me know how you got on in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and please come back to see me and more of my videos. Uh, I've got loads of recipes lined up so please come back, subscribe, hit on the notification bell so you get notified every time and um, see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.